All right, today we're going to be taking a quick look at this MPS-803 printer by Commodore. This is the successor to the MPS-801 printer. And while I never had one of these growing up as a kid, I did have the 801. This one was a little bit faster. Uh, this one prints at 60 characters per second, whereas the 801, I believe, it was 50 characters per second. Also, the um, 801 could only print in one direction. The head would have to return then we print another line, then the head would return. This one is bi-directional, so it can print, and when the head gets to the end of the line, it can actually print going backwards the other way. So had that advantage as well. It was a little smaller, and it was probably a little cheaper. It, it seems a little, uh, a little bit on the cheaper side when it comes to construction. So this one was uh, purchased off eBay, and uh, it was about 15 U.S. dollars. It was uh, listed as uh, new old stock NOS and uh, it seems a bit dubious the uh, box is in rough shape but as long as it works that's all that matters and it and it was uh, reported to power up the user or the uh, owner uh, did plug it in and test it at my request to see if the power would come on and it did so we'll just go with uh, it's possibly working maybe not but for that amount of money, it, it doesn't matter either way. We'll, we'll figure out something here. All right, let's take a good look on the inside. All right, looking at it from the top view. Uh, printer ribbon cartridge. That's a good sign. This appears to be factory sealed. Oh, it does have a hole in it. That's unfortunate. Looked like a new one there for a moment, but uh, I think it has been pulled out at some point. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and put that to the side. User guide. Warranty card. I'm definitely going to want to send that off and get my warranty going. All right, let's see if we can get this out of the box. Does have both styrofoam pieces in pieces. All right, well, I don't think it's a new one. Uh, it doesn't look like it's discolored or anything, and it still has the original plastic piece on it, I noticed. It's here. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it's got the, uh, the foam for the print head. Yeah, so I'm guessing this is the original color. It doesn't appear to be faded or uh, yellowed at all. Get a closer look there. Now this spot here is where the ribbon goes. And here's the ribbon. It's got some wear on it. This it has been used before, there's no doubt. But that's okay. It does look like it's in pretty good shape. I'm gonna to try to put uh, put a little water on that. See if I can get the ink. It's probably dried out over 30, 40 years. I'm gonna to try to put a little water on it. See if I can moisten it up just enough to get a little ink out of it. 
see if that does anything for me. I know some people use the WD-40 trick. I'll try that. Uh, next time I go to the store, I'll get some WD-40 if the water don't work. So let me try that first. All right, let me see if I can get a ribbon in it now. Let's take a quick look at the back here. We've got several things going on. We've got two switches, two ports. Of course, the power is on this side. Uh, this right here is your device number. Uh, go to the left, you know, this way for device number four. Go that way for device number five. And then on the other side, that, that other white switch that you see there, that is the, uh, the uh, paper feed pitch. Now, if it's to the left, it's one-sixth of an inch. To the right, it's one-eighth of an inch. And then on these two ports here, these are the IEC ports. This is a serial printer, and it hooks to the same port that your 1541 would hook to. It uses the exact same type of cable, like this. And that goes in there. You can daisy-chain one after another. And uh, that is the back of it. While well, the MPS801 printer had to have tractor paper, which is the kind of paper that had uh, a little perforated edge with holes all the way down on both sides, this printer can actually do both. It can do the uh, single sheets of typing paper or regular notebook paper or whatever you got, or it can do the tractor paper if you've got the uh, tractor accessory mounts on the left and right side there. Uh, this one, it doesn't have that on it, but uh, that's fine. I, I'm just going to sheet uh, put a sheet of uh, regular notebook paper in there and see if it'll feed that in. Where's the power switch? Well, that's a good sign. I do have a power light there, and the head did uh, make some movement there. So uh, let's go ahead and hook it to the Commodore 64 and see what it does for us. All right, it's all hooked up. Let's try to give it a, a print a test and see what we got out of it. You might have noticed over there, it initialized the printer when the computer came on. I've got speed script uh, in cartridge form in the back there. And let's just do a, a quick test page. All right, we'll do a control P and that should send it to the printer. Ah, very good. Looks like it works. Well, at least it would work if it had a good ribbon, I think. Let's uh, let me get a little closer and I'll show you what came out. Now you can look really closely it's very dim, um, very very light, but it is on there. So it is printing. I think we just need to get either a new ribbon or re-ink this one. It's been sitting for quite a few years, I'm sure. And uh, But the good, good thing is it, it appears to be a working printer, and uh, we'll go forward with that. Oh, one other thing I would mention on colors. You'll see this in uh, two variations for color. You'll see this uh, this color like a Commodore 64 color. And then you'll also see a black version. Uh, I'm guessing that was for the uh, 264 line, which would be your Commodore 16s, 116, plus 4, 264. And the other ones that never made it out the door like the 364. And uh, yeah, seems to be a good little printer. So yeah, just a quick video showing that and what they look like.
I'm sure that you've seen one already if you're looking for this video, but to see what they look like coming out of the box, which uh, supposedly new old stock, but it looks like old, old stock. No worries, it's still a, uh, in good shape and it seems to work. We just need to get a new ribbon. I think they're still available online, although they're not not too readily available like they used to be, but I'm recording this video at the end of 2022, and I've noticed they're about, I don't know, 10 to 15 US dollars uh, for a new ribbon. So we're gonna have one sent to us and see what uh, what that does for us when they get here. All right, till next time.